Hello. This is a narrated PowerPoint presentation designed to help you understand how to calculate the dosage for both the local anesthetic and the vasoconstrictors. In the same folder where you found this narrated PowerPoint, you will also find an unnarrated version. Many participants find it helpful to print out um, a copy and follow along with it so they can make notes. Sometimes it helps them understand the information better. In that same folder you will also find a helpful worksheet which actually is um, many of the words match what you will hear me say in this PowerPoint and you can also print that out as well. And there are two other documents which you might find helpful. One is a um, calculations problems and a separate document with the answers. So what do you need to know in order to calculate dosages given? I'm going to take you through a series of steps, but basically the first thing you need to know is how much anesthetic did you give in volume? That means how much solution did you inject into the patient? So when you think volume or how much solution, think milliliters because volume of local anesthetics and vasoconstrictors are, is, are expressed as milliliters. The second thing you need to calculate is how much drug is in each milliliter that you gave. So once you've determined that you've given a certain amount of milliliters, you then must calculate how many milligrams of drug were in each milliliter that you gave. Once you determine that, that's expressed as milligrams per milliliter. Once you've determined that, you can multiply the two together and determine actually how many milligrams of the drug were given to the patient. Lastly, you have to be able to um, calculate the maximum amount of drug that you can give to each individual patient. This is known as the maximum recommended dose or the MRD. So as you will learn, each drug has a maximum recommended dosage that has to be calculated or has to be known so that you will not give the patient too much anesthetic and therefore um, run the risk of the patient becoming toxic. As you probably know, a local anesthetic cartridge looks like this and for our purposes we're going to say that the anesthetic cartridge contains a total volume if you administer the whole cartridge of 1.8 milliliters. However, this next slide will contradict what I just said. Many of you may have realized that lately local anesthetic cartridges, instead of being labeled 1.8 milliliters, are now labeled 1.7. The history behind this has to do with the Food and Drug Administration, who asked drug manufacturers to guarantee the amount that they put into each cartridge. And the manufacturers cannot guarantee that you can deliver an entire 1.8 milliliters but they can guarantee that you will deliver at least 1.7. In actuality, the average cartridge contains more than that. The average cartridge contains 1.76 milliliters. Malamed suggests that we um, still continue to the, use the amount of 1.8 milliliters when we do our drug calculations. And I happen to agree for two reasons. 1.8 is an even number and divides into our, a lot of our calculations more easily. And secondly, if we are in fact delivering 1.76 and we say we're delivering 1.8, we're actually delivering less than we think to the patient and that's safer for the patient's benefit. So step number one, as I said, is to determine how much solution was administered to the patient and this is volume. So if you give one entire cartridge, it is 1.8 milliliters. If you divide that in two and you only give a half a cartridge, you are delivering 0.9 milliliters. Half of 0.9 or one quarter of a cartridge is 0.45 milliliters. And as you can see a third of a cartridge or three divided into 1.8 is 0.6 milliliters. Twice that amount or two-thirds of a cartridge is 1.2 milliliters. These numbers are handy to try to keep in your memory bank so that you don't have to go figuring it out each time that you administer it. This diagram will 
probably help you understand it a little better. When you divide the cartridge in half, you are giving 0.9 milliliters. As you become more experienced at your practice of administering local anesthesia, you will realize that very quickly you can learn how to visualize how much solution still remains in the cartridge so that you will know how much solution you've actually injected. It's also helpful when your um, when your anesthetic technique calls for less than a cartridge, for example, if you're supposed to deliver um, say two-thirds of a cartridge to get an adequate block and you know that that's 1.2 milliliters it's helpful to be able to visualize when you have one-third of the cartridge remaining so that you give an adequate amount of drug in my experience newer clinicians tend to under administrate um, probably out of anxiety but it doesn't take too long before you can visualize splitting the cartridge into either halves quarters or thirds so that it's a little bit easier it's also helpful to know what we call a stopper full. And as I think you're probably aware, the anesthetic cartridge has a rubber stopper in it. And the stopper is what your harpoon is engaged into so that when you push on the thumb ring, you are pushing on the stopper and delivering the solution out the end of the needle. Each time you move that stopper, one time its own width, you are giving approximately 0.2 milliliters of solution. Or another way to look at it, one stopper full is equal to 0.2 milliliters. And so if you determine the number of stoppers, stopper fulls that you've administered and you multiply that number times 0.2, that will tell you exactly how much solution you have administered. Here's an example. You determine that you've moved that stopper three times its own width or you've given three stoppers full. You simply multiply three times 0.02 and you know that you've given 0.6 milliliters of solution which is basically one quarter of a cartridge. Nope, I take that back. That is basically one third of a cartridge. This picture will help you. Each time you move this stopper that distance down, for example, the first time you move the stopper, it generally ends up just a little below the um, line that indicates the type of anesthetic you're giving that would be 0.2 milliliters and you see that you divide it you divide the whole cartridge and it will tell you exactly how much you have administered the next step is to determine how many milligrams are in each, each milliliter of solution and as I mentioned this is expressed as milligrams per milliliter our local anesthetics are listed as a percentage and that percentage stands for the concentration of the drug. That means how concentrated is the drug in the solution that you're administering. The ones that we most commonly administer in hygiene are going to be 2%, 3%, or 4%. There is also a local anesthetic, bupivacaine, which comes in a 0.5% solution, but it's generally not indicated for dental hygiene procedures because it has a very long-lasting effect. So let's look at 2% lidocaine as an example. As I said, the percentage is actually telling us the concentration of the drug. But in the case of 2%, it is telling us that 2% is the concentration you will find um, the number of grams in 100 milliliters. And we administer much less than 100 milliliters during our procedures. So we must reduce the 100 milliliters until we get to the amount known as milligrams per milliliter. 2% solution says there are 2 grams of drug or 2 grams of lidocaine in every 100 milliliters. Now there's 1 gram in every 1,000 milligrams. So if we have 2 grams, another way to say that is 2,000 milligrams. So these two numbers are saying the same thing. 2 grams is saying the same as 2,000 milligrams. We simply do this because, um, I know you don't want to think about the word algebra, but when you're reducing like this and you have zeros in common, you simply get rid of the zeros that match. So these two zeros match those two zeros and 2,000 milligrams 
in 100 milliliters tells you there are 20 milligrams for every one milliliter that you give. Bottom line, a 2% solution, which started out as 2 grams in 100 milliliters, boils down to 20 milligrams in each milliliter that you deliver. Here's a quick tip. If you don't want to stop and think about and figure out what the previous slide told you, the easiest way to remember this is you take whatever the percentage of solution is and you put a zero behind that number and it will tell you how many milligrams are in a milliliter. So a 2% solution is 20 milligrams per milliliter. 3% solution, like mepivacaine, is 30 milligrams per milliliter. And a 4% solution, like prilocaine or articaine, ends up being 40 milligrams per milliliter. Another way to look at it is you take the concentration and you multiply it by 10 and you will see that you come up with the same numbers. So again, it just ends up being a zero behind that number or that number times 10 and it tells you the number of milligrams per milliliter. The next step is to multiply the milligrams per milliliter by the amount of solution that you have given. So you figured out that you gave a certain amount you figure out how many milligrams per milliliter there are, you multiply the two together and that tells you how many milligrams of the local anesthetic you have given to the patient. And I will take you through a few examples to make sure that you understand. So here's one example. You gave two and a half cartridges of 2% lidocaine. So step one, figure out the volume of drug given. Two and a half cartridges you can add the amount in each cartridge together, 1.8, 1.8, and half a cartridge is 0.9, and you come up with 4.5 milliliters total volume given. Some people would do this math differently. They would take 2.5, knowing that means 2.5, and, and they would multiply 2.5 times 1.8. You're going to come up with the same answer. Some people find multiplication easier. Some people find addition. You simply need to know how much solution did you give. The next thing you know is a 2% solution means that there are 20 milligrams in each milliliter you deliver. Then you multiply the volume given, which is 4.5, times the milligrams in one milliliter, or milligrams per milliliter, which is 20 in this case, and you come up with 90 milligrams. So this patient who received two and a half cartridges of 2% lidocaine has been given 20 milligrams, and in parentheses, 4.5 milliliters of 2% lidocaine solution. Let's look at what happens if you give less than one cartridge. Our example here is a quarter of a cartridge of 3% mepivacaine. So first we have to determine what is the volume when we give one quarter of a cartridge. A whole cartridge is 1.8. We divide that by one quarter. And that tells us we're giving 0.45 milliliters of the drug. A 3% solution says we have 30 milligrams in each milliliter. So once we know the volume and then we know the milligrams per milliliter, we multiply the two and it tells us exactly how much drug we have given to the patient in terms of milligrams. So this patient, who got a quarter of a cartridge of 3% mepivacaine, has received 13.5 milligrams or 0.45 milliliters of that particular drug. Here is a table that you may find handy to remember. I think it's relatively easy to put that zero behind the concentration and no milligrams per milliliter. And many times you will administer an entire cartridge. You can therefore simply take the volume in an entire cartridge, multiply it by the concentration, and that tells you how many milligrams are in each cartridge. So lidocaine, 2%, contains 36 milligrams. Mepivacaine, 2%, also contains 36 milligrams. But when you get 3% mepivacaine, you are now giving 54 milligrams. 4% prilocaine or articaine will give the patient 72 milligrams. And if you should ever use 0.5% bupivacaine, the patient will be delivered 9 milligrams for an entire cartridge. So these numbers are handy to remember, especially the first three.
You're also going to need to know how to figure out what is in an entire cartridge in order to determine how many cartridges you can give before you reach the maximum recommended dose for each local anesthetic. So you need to know how to figure these numbers out. Let's talk a little more about this maximum recommended dose. The MRD is a safety measure that we use in order to avoid giving a toxic amount of drug to our patients. And as you know, dentistry uses several different drugs that come in different concentrations. Each of these drugs all have an MRD, and that MRD can be based either on the patient's weight, which we're going to have to determine how many milligrams we can give them for each pound that they weigh, or the drug can have an absolute maximum, meaning regardless of how much a patient weighs, if you have, say, a 250-pound excuse me, a 250 pound patient, you cannot base the MRD on the milligrams per pound because <clears throat> you will see in my examples that that would bring you over the absolute maximum. So for our patients who weigh less, most likely we're going to base our MRD on milligrams per pound. And for our patients who weigh a little more, we have to figure out whether or not we should go over the absolute maximum. The other thing to keep in mind is when we have patients who are um, underweight, children, um, young people, elderly people, medically compromised people, they are all going to metabolize and excrete these drugs differently and the MRD for them should be lowered. In case you happen to be using something other than the current edition of Malamed, which is the sixth edition, it is important for you to know that his older editions listed two different MRDs for our local anesthetics. He listed the manufacturer's MRD and his own personal MRD, which in most cases, and if not all cases, was lower than that listed by the manufacturer. And for some people, this created confusion. They weren't sure which MRD they should be paying attention to. So in order to avoid confusion, in his current edition, Dr. Malamed lists only the MRDs for our local anesthetics that have been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. And the examples I'm using in these slides reflect the MRDs noted in the current edition of Malamed. So let's take a look at how we would determine the MRD based on our patient's weight. I'm going to use 4% Prilocaine as an example. 4% Prilocaine has an MRD based on weight of 3.6 milligrams for each pound that the patient weighs, but never to exceed a maximum dosage of 600 milligrams. So we'll use easy math here. We'll say we have a patient who weighs 100 pounds. We simply multiply their weight by the MRD of 3.6 milligrams for each pound they weigh, and it tells us for a 100 pound patient, instead of that MRD being 600, that MRD should only be 360. The second step is to, deter is to determine how many milligrams are in each cartridge of Prilocaine that we might deliver. So a 4% concentration tells us there are 40 milligrams in each milliliter. We multiply that by the number of milliliters in the cartridge, and we find out there are 72 milligrams in each cartridge of 4% Prilocaine. We take that 72 milligrams, and we divide it into the MRD for this 100-pound patient, which we've already determined is 360 milligrams. So 360 milligrams divided by the number of milligrams in a cartridge tells us that we should deliver no more than five cartridges of 4% Prilocaine to a patient if they weigh 100 pounds. And this is what I meant by when you have patients that weigh less, you probably should pay attention to the MRD based on milligrams per pound rather than the absolute maximum recommended dose of 600 milligrams. Let's see what happens when we base how many cartridges we can give on the absolute MRD. So again, I'm going to use 4% Prilocaine, which has an absolute MRD of 600 milligrams. All I have to do is take the 72 milligrams that I know is in each cartridge, 
divide it into the MRD of 600 milligrams, which means no patient should receive more than this. And this tells me no patient should ever receive more than 8.3 cartridges of 4% prilocaine at one appointment. And I want you to notice how much more this is if the patient weighs 100 pounds, because a 100 pound patient can only get about five cartridges. So that's more than three cartridges too many. Let's look at what happens if our patient weighs 167 pounds. 167 pounds times that 3.6 milligrams per pound gives us a dosage of 601.2 milligrams, which is a little bit more than our absolute maximum recommended dosage. So by this example, we learn that anyone who weighs 166 pounds or more should only receive 8.3 cartridges. These next few slides will list for you what Malamed currently has as the MRDs for the commonly used dental local anesthetic drugs. So 2% lidocaine, it's milligrams per pound and it's absolute maximum. You'll notice mepivacaine comes in two concentrations, 2 and 3%, but the current recommendation is it does not matter between the two concentrations, the MRD milligrams per pound or absolute MRD is the same whether it is a 2 or a 3% concentration. Prilocaine we have already gone through. Another popular um, anesthetic used in dentistry today is 4% Articane. And you will notice that according to the um, manufacturers in the United States and the FDA, Articane only lists an MRD based on milligrams per pound. There is none currently listed as an absolute maximum for Articane. Previous editions of Malamed cited an absolute MRD of 500 milligrams for this drug. And lastly, we have the drug Bupivacaine, which is hardly ever used in dental hygiene practice. Um, in the United States, it lists an absolute maximum of 90 milligrams, but no milligrams per pound in the United States, only what you see listed here, and that is listed under Canadian federal regulations. Vasoconstrictors. We must also be able to calculate the dosage of vasoconstrictor that we give to our patients for the same reason. By law, we have to know how much drug we gave the patient, and vasoconstrictors also have maximum recommended dosages based on the patient's medical status. In um, the world of vasoconstrictors, the amount contained in each cartridge is expressed as a concentration ratio. And the ratios that we use in dentistry are what you see listed here. The 1 to 20,000 ratio is for a drug called levonodeferrin, which is the vasoconstrictor you find in mepivacaine. The other three concentrations, 1 to 50, 1 to 100, and 1 to 200,000 are the concentrations of epinephrine that you find in our other local anesthetics like lidocaine, articaine, and prilocaine. One thing that is helpful for you to remember is the bigger the number, the less concentrated the solution. So of all of these numbers, the 1 to 200,000 has the biggest number, but the least amount of vasoconstrictor. It will become a little bit clearer when I show you how or what these numbers translate into in terms of milligrams per milliliter. So how do we calculate the dosage of a vasoconstrictor. Basically, we are going to use the exact same steps that we used for calculating the local anesthetic drug. We need to know how much volume or how much solution in milliliters did we give the patient. Then we need to know how many milligrams are in each milliliter that we deliver. We will multiply those same two numbers as we did before and that will tell us the milligrams of vasoconstrictor we have given to the patient. When we want to calculate how many cartridges we can give before we reach the MRD, we are going to figure out how, many, how much vasoconstrictor is in each cartridge, and we're going to divide that into the maximum recommended dosage for that particular vasoconstrictor, as you will see in the examples that follow.
So how do we calculate milligrams per milliliter for a vasoconstrictor? Well, basically it's done the same way, but it begets, excuse me, it starts to get a lot more confusing to some people because the numbers are bigger. And some people just give up and say, I can't figure that out. But Give it a try, because it's really not that hard. Let's use epinephrine 1 to 100,000 as our example, because this is by far the most common um, ratio of vasoconstrictor that you are likely to use. So when you see 1 to 100,000, this means for every 100,000 milliliters of solution, there is one gram of epinephrine. We don't come close to considering 100,000 milliliters of solution. So just like we did with our local anesthetic, we have to reduce this number. So one gram is the same as 1,000 milligrams. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get rid of these three zeros and three, these three zeros. And that tells us that there is one milligram in 100 milliliters of solution. Well, we don't come close to giving 100 milliliters of solution, and what we want to know is how many milligrams of epinephrine are in only one milliliter of solution. In order to find that out, we are going to divide this 100 into that one milligram, and that is going to tell us there, that there is one one-hundredth of a milligram of epinephrine in each milliliter of solution that we deliver. Again, what I did was reduce this fraction. It told me one milligram in 100 milliliters. Divide the bottom number into the top number to come up with this number, and that is how many milligrams are in a milliliter. When I want to determine how much is in a cartridge, I take the milligrams per milliliter, multiply it by that 1.8, and that tells me there are 0.018 milligrams of epinephrine in each cartridge that I administer to my patient. Here is another quick tip. Using the concentration, cross out the last three zeros, and that will tell you how many milligrams um, how many when that will excuse me that will tell you one milligram in how many milliliters you simply take the bottom number divide it into the top number to find out milligrams per milliliter so one to fifty thousand remove the last three zeros one milligram in fifty milliliters fifty into one is point oh two a hundred into one is point oh one two hundred into one is 0.005. I'll also use this slide to demonstrate how if you know that the 1 to 100,000 is twice as concentrated as 1 to 200,000, this number will be half of that number. 100, 1 to 100,000 is half as concentrated as 1 to 50,000, so this number will be half of that number. It's really very helpful if you simply just remember 1 to 100,000, 0.01 milligrams per milliliter, multiply it times point, um, excuse me, multiply it by 1.8 milliliters, and you will get 0.018 milligrams in the cartridge. This slide will show you how many milligrams per milliliter for our concentrations multiplied by the 1.8 and how many milligrams are in each cartridge depending on the concentration ratio. So let's look at what happens if we give more or less than one cartridge. We're going to follow the same steps that we used to determine how much we gave of the local anesthetic drug. In this example, we gave a half a cartridge and it contained a 1 to 100,000 ratio of epinephrine. We know that a half a cartridge is 0.9 milliliters of solution. We know that a 1 to 100,000 ratio is 0.01 milligrams per milliliter. We multiply the two numbers by each other, and that tells us that when we give a half a cartridge at that ratio, we are delivering 0.009 milligrams of epinephrine to the patient. Let's say we give the patient one and a quarter cartridges with the same ratio of epinephrine. Well, one and a quarter cartridges of solution is 2.25 milliliters. It's 1.8 milliliters and 0.45 milliliters for that quarter cartridge.
we take that number, 2.25, we multiply it by our milligrams per milliliter, and it tells us that when we've given one and a quarter cartridges of 1 to 100,000 epinephrine, we are delivering 0 0.0225 milligrams of epinephrine. Let's look at how we calculate the MRD. Well, the MRD for both F F excuse me, epinephrine and levonidephrin has an MRD if we have a healthy adult patient, but a different and significantly lower MRD if our patient has cardiovascular disease. And a word about patients with cardiovascular disease. The standard of care says it is a patient with diagnosed cardiovascular disease which is fairly well controlled. For most patients, um, that would mean that if the patient is not controlled, you would probably not be rendering elective dental hygiene care to them anyway. You would most likely dismiss them um, if their cardiovascular disease is out of control at the moment. Say they present you with um, a blood pressure of 200 over 115, you probably would not treat them that day anyway. Never mind, give them epinephrine. But the MRD for epinephrine in a healthy patient is 0.2, and for a patient with controlled cardiovascular disease, it's 0.04. This is milligrams per appointment. Um, I advise you to commit these numbers to memory. It is um, common for these numbers to be asked of you on the um, nerve exam to get your permit to administer local anesthesia. The MRD for levonidephrine is 1 milligram per appointment for a healthy patient and 0.2 milligrams per appointment for a patient with controlled cardiovascular disease. So we need to take three steps in order to calculate the MRD. First of all, we have to determine how many milligrams per milliliter there are for the vasoconstrictor. Then we will take that number and we will multiply it by 1.8 to find out how many milligrams are in each cartridge. These are the same steps we took to figure the MRD for our local anesthetic. Once we know how much, how many, excuse me, how many milligrams are in an entire cartridge, we will divide that into the MRD for the vasoconstrictor to find out how many cartridges we can give. Malamed suggests always rounding down to the nearest half cartridge. So in some of my examples, even though the numbers might be slightly higher by 0.3 or 0.2, I have rounded mine down to um, a number in some instances. It is safer to use less than to use too much, especially in the world of vasoconstrictors. So let's look at epinephrine 1 to 100,000 as our example. As we've already learned, when we have this number, we're going to cross out the last three zeros, divide the 100 into the 1, which means that we have 0.01 milligrams in each milliliter we deliver. Multiply that by how much is in the entire cartridge to find out that we have 0.018 milligrams in that entire cartridge. If we have a healthy adult and our MRD is 0.2, we divide the 0.018 per cartridge into the total we can give to learn that we can ad administer 11 cartridges containing this ratio of epinephrine. I think in most instances you would not come close to administering 11 cartridges, but if you have a healthy adult, you will not be going over the MRD for epinephrine at that concentration. Let's look at what happens with the same ratio if we have a patient with cardiovascular disease and we have to lower the MRD to 0.04. We take the same number, 0.018, and we divide it into the 0.04 and that tells us we can only administer two cartridges per appointment to the patient with controlled cardiovascular disease. Here is a slide that you may find helpful to keep in your memory bank. These are the numbers of cartridges you can deliver to a patient based on the ratio and again the first three that you see here are concentrations for epinephrine, and the last one is the concentration used for the vasoconstrictor levonidephrine. So look at the difference 
11 if the patient is healthy, and 2 if they have cardiovascular disease. The last thing that you need to know about is what is called the limiting factor. Now both our local anesthetic and our vasoconstrictor, as we have seen, have a maximum recommended dosage. And in all instances, one, meaning the local anesthetic or the vasoconstrictor, will reach the maximum recommended dose before the other. Whichever one reaches the MRD first is the one that limits the total, total amount of solution that we can give to our patient, and this becomes known as the limiting factor. And I think my examples will help explain this a little bit better. So here we have 2% lidocaine with 1 to 100,000 epinephrine. We're going to give that to a 115 pound healthy female patient. So the MRD for 2% lidocaine, based on this patient's weight, since she only weighs 115 pounds, we're going to use 3.2, which is the MRD based on weight, multiply it by her weight, and that tells us we can give her a maximum of 368 milligrams. If we divide the milligrams in a cartridge of epinephrine, excuse me, a cartridge of 2% lidocaine, which is 36 milligrams, into the 368 milligrams for this patient, this tells us we can give this 115-pound patient 10 cartridges of 2% lidocaine. As we saw in the previous slide, since we have a healthy patient and the MRD for epi is 0.2, we divide the milligrams per cartridge into that 0.2, and that tells us we could give this patient 11 cartridges if we were basing it on the MRD for epinephrine. So of these two, the one which limits the number of cartridges we can give this patient is the 2% lidocaine, not the epinephrine. And so the limiting factor becomes the lidocaine, not the epinephrine. In a cardiovascular patient, more than likely that would be the opposite and the vasoconstrictor would become the limiting factor. So that, pre that ends this um, narrated presentation and I hope that it has helped you understand how to calculate local anesthetic dosages.